I was raised in southwest Idaho. My parents gave me an incredibly excellent start in my life, which I appreciated very much. But I quit school at age 19, unfortunately. My reasoning was, I'm smart enough to get a job. How much smarter do you need to be? And with that shallow thinking, I quit school, age 19, and got a job, went to work. A little while later, got married, started a little family. And I'm struggling and, you know, trying to do my best. But it seems like each year I'm falling just a little bit further behind. Finally, age 25. The climax of my sort of, you know, weariness with where I was, not doing as well as I thought I should. I hear a knock on my door. And I happen to be home alone. When I opened the door, there was a little Girl Scout, about this tall, selling Girl Scout cookies. And she gave me the finest sales presentation I've ever heard. Girl Scouts around the world, no better organization. And we've got these cookies, only $2, several flavors. And with a big smile, she very politely asked me to buy. No problem, I wanted to buy. Big problem, I haven't got $2 in my pocket. Now I'm a grown man, I live in America, I've been to one year of college, I'm married, I've got a family, and I don't have $2 in my pocket. And I didn't want to tell her that. So I did what I thought was next best. I lied to her. I said, hey, look, I've already bought lots of Girl Scout cookies. I've still got plenty in the house that we haven't eaten yet. And she said, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. And she leaves. When she leaves, I say to myself, I don't want to live like this anymore. I mean, how low can you get lying to a Girl Scout? I mean, <laughs> that's about as low as you can go. But I promised myself that day I was going to start my search of finding opportunity, finding somebody who could teach me and coach me on doing much better for myself and for my family and for my future. And shortly after that, I met a most extraordinary man, very wealthy, but um, a friend of mine said, you've got to meet this man. He's rich, but he's easy to talk to. He's got a unique philosophy of business and life. And the more he told me about this man, the more I said, I've got to meet this guy. And shortly after that, I had a chance to meet him. Sure enough, uh, when I met him, I was impressed. Obviously, he was rich. But he was friendly and easy to talk to. And I said to myself, if I could just get around someone like him, and if he would coach me, I would be willing to learn anything. I'd love to be like him. Well, my good fortune was he invited me to join his company and over the next five years, my dream came true. He coached me and taught me how to turn my life from pennies to fortune. And he's not alive anymore, but uh, I'd like to pay tribute to him one more time, Mr. Earl Schof, for the dramatic impact he had on my life, especially during that five-year period. And so my whole life turned around I made my fortune by the time I was 32, starting at age 25. And uh, some of the ideas that I want to share with you today came from that five-year experience. Then from there, I got into lecturing and giving seminars, and I've written a few books. And uh, my career now spans about 41 years. But I'll never forget the impact this gentleman had on my life with a few simple concepts that totally changed my life, changed my future, and changed everything. Jim Rohn's view of the 21st century. Here's number one, unprecedented opportunity. We not only have begun a new century, century 21, it's a new millennium. A millennium is a thousand year period. We've had six so far. This is the beginning of the seventh millennium, and some scholars tell us that this could very well be an extraordinary time for the human race, this seventh millennium. And there's probably a lot of good reason that that is probably true. Unprecedented opportunity. Uh, we've now got the technology 
Uh, we pick up a telephone now and talk to somebody on the other side of the world. Transportation now is so easy. I get on an airplane in Los Angeles and uh, 13 hours later I'm in Tokyo. Uh, five meals, three movies and you're there. I mean, you know, it's a simple deal. Anyway, we've got technology, we've got transportation, we've got all the rest, right? So this is going to be a time of unprecedented opportunity in every field you can imagine. Every industry, every country, it's going to be the greatest period of opportunity time in the history of the human race, the 21st century, especially these opening years of the 21st century. So that's number one, unprecedented opportunity. Now here's the second note to take. Now also keen competition, because we now play the world game. And it's not just competition across the street and company to company and, you know, division to division and, uh, you know, company to company. Now it's worldwide competition. A job now becomes available. Does it go to someone in Minnesota or someone in India? Worldwide competition. So now you've got to be ready to cash in on the opportunity, but you've also got to be ready for the competition. So I've got some interesting ideas on how to be prepared for both opportunity and competition in these opening years of the 21st century. Here's some of my best advice. Number one, you've got to have more than one skill. It's okay to have one skill, but I'm telling you, if you want economic safety for the future, especially this century, my personal opinion, you need more than one skill. We've seen people, right, the last uh, 15, 20 years that only had one skill, worked for this company for a long time, the division the guy worked for got chopped, eliminated, now he loses his job. Now he tells us he's in economic distress. Why would that be? Simple answer, he only had one skill. So for economic safety for the future, my personal advice, you gotta have more than one skill. In fact, it led me to my first fortune, and that was learning more than one skill. I started learning these extra skills in Idaho, where I grew up. I knew how to milk cows, but it didn't pay very well. Then someone gave me this incredible advice. If you want to lay the foundation for a future fortune, you've got to learn more than one skill. And I started that process age 25. Here's the first one, and I started part-time. A little sales job that I got. A product that I believed in, learned how to present it well enough for somebody to say yes, gave excellent service so that that would lead to multiple sales, and this little extra part-time job in sales absolutely started multiplying my income. From milk and cows, now I've got this Ability now to start getting customers, keep them serviced, and make some money in this extra skill. So now I've got two skills, milking cows and finding customers. Here's the next skill I learned, just to give you a quick list. Next was finding good people. If you've got a little enterprise going and you need some people, you have to just go look for them. And when I learned this skill, finding good people for my little enterprise, I couldn't believe how it drastically changed my income. My income now starts to multiply, not just increase. So now I've got what? Three skills, milking cows, getting customers, finding good people. I'm on my way. Here's the next one that paid me big money, in case you're interested, and that's organizing. Organizing simply means getting people to work together. Big challenge, but if you learn the skill, getting people to work together, they pay extraordinary money. Here's the next one that really increased my income substantially, and that's promotion and recognition. Rewarding people for small steps of progress. I mastered this one. And here's the philosophy behind it. Be so busy giving other people recognition, you really don't need it for yourself. I mastered this. Guess what it pays? Big money. Let me just give you one more, and it's in three parts. And that's communication. Learning to affect other people with your language. 
Of all the things not to be lazy about, it's language, because words can work miracles. And communication I found in three parts. Here's number one, training, showing somebody how the job works. Showing somebody how the business works. We call that training. I got good at that, paid big money. Here was the next one, teaching. Teaching people how life works. Teaching people how to set goals. Teaching how to become a leader, manager, entrepreneur. Stepping up to the higher opportunity and better challenge. This one paid me extraordinary money. But this one paid the best, learning to inspire. Helping people to see themselves better than they are. So I've got how many skills, right? A big long list. So safety, economic safety for the future, especially the opening years of the 21st century. Learn more than one skill. Here's number two. It would be good to learn more than one language. Some of my business colleagues who uh, speak three or four languages earn three, four million dollars a year. One of my friends, Leon Weisbein from Russia. I remember when he was making three million dollars a year, he spoke three languages. Here's what he said, I think I'll learn another language, make another million dollars. Those extra languages are so valuable. When I travel the world, I gotta find somebody that knows more than one language or I'm in deep trouble. If you think the time has passed you by to learn that second, third language, make this note. You heard it from Jim Rohn. Give it as a gift to your children. The second language. Maybe that'll inspire them to learn the third language and then no telling where it might go from there. I asked a school teacher one time, how many languages can a child learn? Here's what she said. As many as you will teach them. They don't lack capacity, they don't lack intelligence, they certainly don't lack curiosity. They only lack a teacher. So you got my good advice now? More than one skill, more than one language, here's the rest. Learn the simple economic formula that works for everybody, and I can give it to you in just a couple of sentences. A simple economic formula, kids can understand it, Anybody can understand it. Anybody that wants to get paid, here's the language for your notes. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. That's as simple as you can put economics. Anybody that wants to get paid, you get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. The marketplace is the people. Now the value we bring is one part of it a product or a service, but here's the other part, the value you become. So just off to the side put, the value is two parts, the value you bring, like a product, if you manufactured it, you might keep improving the product. If someone else manufactured it and you're out selling it, they probably keep improving the product. But this is the one you have to work on yourself, the value you become, like an entrepreneur, a leader, a teacher supervisor, manager. What you become also pays much more than what you bring. Once I understood that, then here's what my mentor said. Go to work on yourself harder than you work on your job. If you work hard on your job, you can make a living. Then he said, if you work hard on yourself, you could make a fortune. So I worked hard on my job and made a living, but I learned, starting with those extra hours per week, learning these extra skills, I started working on myself. And here's a philosophical phrase everybody should take home. Here it is, success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. Success is not something you pursue. It's what you attract by becoming attractive by becoming attractive to the marketplace. What would do that? Multiple skills, multiple languages, and then some of the things I'm gonna talk about the rest of the seminar.